Coming up on Unpacked. All I remember was bright lights and the car spinning and uh, how how bad were the injuries? At first I was thinking, why is there water, you know, all over my face? Mm. I could have lost my life. My children would have right now be living without a mother, all because of a drunken driver. What happens when you almost lose your life due to a drunken driver on the road? Today's guest is here to share her story. Let's unpack. Palesa Madisi Kwane is one of South Africa's most loved performers, having starred in a range of soapies and dramas. In 2019, a horrific car accident with a drunk driver almost robbed the actress of her life. The mother of three survived. This is her story. Let's unpack. Valissa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored. Like, finally, I'm on a really show. I got the call. <laughs> I got the call. <laughs> and you know, I, mean, I always watch it on Instagram, on YouTube. You yes. Know. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm following it up. Everybody obviously knows you as an actress, a media personality, but you experienced a horrible car accident. Can you take us back to that fateful day where this accident happened, the events building up to the accident and what actually took place? Mm, yeah, 2019. I'm, I'm going to relive that moment again. But um, just to make it, you know, short and all I was from a family wedding, my cousin's wedding. Well, where, was yeah. the, where was the wedding? It was in the Val. Okay, so you were at, attending a wedding in a Val. I was And attending. you were with your daughter. I was with my daughter. Yes. And then obviously after the wedding, now um, people that stay far, I needed to transport to them. Yes. And then fast forward, we're driving all the way from the Val, get to the site of Jobek, Vetkopeni, you know, I'm first, you know, dropping off cousins and aunts and, you know, mm. everything was fine. And mind you, really, um, I don't drink, mm. I don't smoke. Mm. I was as sober as sober. Mm. I've never drank in my life. I've never smoked. I'm like, yes. you know what I mean? Mm. So mm. Uh, my mind was, is clear. And then at first, my little girl, after dropping off, you know, the relatives and all, my little girl came to sit with me in the front. Mm. And then along the way, I'm not sure what happened. But then, you know, when that instinct tells you, you oh, know, stop the car, tell baby to go and sit at the back. She was nine years old at the mm. time. And I'm waking her up, Muhumi, go and sit at the back. And then, because I could see she was falling asleep, mm. you know. No, mommy, I'm tired. Out of nowhere, put the brakes on in the middle of the night. Mm. North riding side. Went to that side, opened the boot, got a blanket, picked her up, put her at the back seat of the car. Imugenya safety belt, you know, covered it. Well, so like why, that. but something this told you for mm. You know, when you're mm. when you are inclined with your spiritual, you know, side, mm. I mm. think, yeah, you know, I'm I'm just like that. I'm very spiritually sensitive. Mm. And I don't know why. And you know, I just decided to stop the car in the middle of the night, not even thinking about my safety, but mm. making sure that um whom he goes and sit, you know, sleeps at the back and covering him. Immediately. Afterwards, play my gospel music, Benjamin Dube, mm. you know, yeah, everything is also cool and, you know, I'm worshipping. Now I'm driving home um, towards Vetkopen. Traffic lights, I'm sitting there worshipping, looking at Zoe Muhumi, she's sleeping fine. Immediately afterwards, um, the traffic lights turned green, giving me right of way mm. uh, as I turned right into Vetkopen. Mm. Turning right, honestly speaking, I'm not sure what happened. All I remember, all I remember was mm. bright lights and the car spinning and a bang, you know? Mm. And I'm thinking, what is happening? You know, at that time, you're still confused and thinking, what is happening? You know, mm. but one thing that I know for sure is that I saw bright light mm. on the oncoming, you know, traffic and then the car started spinning and as I was still trying to understand well, what is happening did I bump someone or you know did I did the car roll I think for a second again I lost conscious and then when it was dim for those few seconds 
uh, I heard voices, my daughter's voice at the back, like on my ear. Mommy, mommy, wake up. I'm so, I think that's what woke me up because mm. that's when I realized maybe I had lost conscious afterwards. Mm. Mm. And then as I stood up, um, held my head up high, at first I was thinking, why is there water, you know, all over my face? Mm. Water. And then I opened my eyes and I, then I think that's when I started realizing, oh no, this is a crash, or, but I don't know if mm. I was bumped or if I crashed something. Mm. And then there was smoke right in front of me. Mm. So I think um, the engine was catching fire. Mm. But I think at that moment, all I was focusing on was this voice at mm. the back. Mommy, mommy, you know what I mean? So um, I tried to, you know, uh, stay unconscious, trying to open the door, because the only thing I remember was telling my little girl to open the doors. I'm like, open the door, get out, because I could see smoke, mm. smoke in front of me. And she was like saying, mommy, the doors are not opening up. Mm. And Linda, when I tried to open the doors on my, you know, on my right, and in, the doors were not opening up. Mm. So... As a mother, I think I started panicking, hitting the window with my hands, like with my oar, you know, mm. just to break the windows. And then all of a sudden, now again, I've lost conscious again because I think I was hitting the window so hard mm. and the windscreen had hit my face or my forehead or, you know, but I could even smell the smoke on the engine, mm. you know. I honestly don't know what happened because the next time I found myself, I think I could hear the voices, noises of people, you know? I don't even know how my daughter got out of the car mm. because when she tells me, she said people came in and they opened the back seat of the car. Mm. She says, Mommy, not the back seat, the, the boot. Mm. So they took her out, go putting like at the back boot. Mm. I don't know how. Now the only time I remember was now I was all of a sudden in the middle of the road and uh, but I could still hear my daughter's cry. Mm. Mommy, mommy and stuff like that and uh, people's voices, call ambulances and you know people were dragging me. How? I don't know. And then as I was also gaining conscious and then all of a sudden uh, ambulance, sound of an ambulance. Now they're taking me to this ambulance. And I'm a bit confused at that mm. time. I wanted to see my baby girl. Where is Zoe? Because her name is, her other name is Zoe. Mm. You know what I mean? And I, it was dark because it was in the middle of the night, mm. you know? So I don't know where my daughter was, mm. but I remember also being put inside the ambulance kept on losing conscious and, you know, the ambulance guys kept on saying, no, speak to her, speak to her, because I was getting, it, it felt like my, you know, my spirit or, you know, was getting out of my body mm. at the time, mm. you know. Um, and then all of a sudden, at that time, I didn't have medical aid mm. at the time. And... Um, the, host, the ambulance took me, I think, to, is it um, Helen Joseph at first mm. with my girl? And then when we got to Helen Joseph Hospital, it was a public hospital. Mm. They were told, I was told, or all I remember, as much as I was bleeding, or no, they cannot admit me there because I'm with a child. They don't have a children's hospital. So mm. now all these things again of, you know, me, getting in and out of, coming in and out of consciousness. Now they are arguing with the ambulance guys to say, take her to another hospital because she's with a child. Mm. And I'm thinking, what is happening? They put me again on my stretcher, go to Charlotte Matreco Hospital so that they admit my little girl on the other hospital. Mm. But I must say, really, you know what I mean? Um, one thing that upsets me mm. about our public care public hospital, um, because at that time, I think in my mind, I was also fighting to be awake because mm. my only focus was, where is my daughter? Mm. Is my daughter fine? 
You know what I mean? So, and then all of a sudden, this nursing sister comes in. You know what I mean? Mm. And I'm not sure what happened all of a sudden. Uh, because after a few days after that, I saw a picture of myself with blood all over, you know? Wow. And then, uh, obviously, we are also dealing with, um, I think, student doctors. But how did they treat you? You know, I understand um, really that they are probably overworked, our public doctors. Mm. I understand the pressure that they're working on. And, uh, I mean, it's understandable. Underst yeah. So mm. poor English is, yeah. <laughs> we understand, you know, all the pressure that they work under. But I remember as, uh, because I was on a stretcher at the time, mm. firstly, and then once again, I'm thinking about my daughter and I'm, I keep on asking, where am I now? Where's my daughter? And I remember, um, firstly, it was their attitude. Mm. You know, um, it was not very nice. Mm. And firstly, she kept on asking me on a stretcher, what happened? Lady, what happened? You know, but with an attitude. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know my rights. And at that time, I'm also upset. I'm waking up to, I'm hearing this voice and this guy, doctor and a female doctor. What happened? Who is she? You know, but then just rudely so. Mm -hmm. But my thing, uh, my first question was, where is my daughter? They're like, no, we just want to know what, what happened, what happened? And then the other one came in and like, no, just teach her, just, just clean her up. So, but just the whole, you know, uh, procedure of, I'm not saying they should uh, pamper me and nurse me because that room was full of everybody, you know, mm. who has been hurt, people with blood and stuff. You know what I mean? So they asked me if um, my name, I gave them my name, I told them my name, but then this doctor was just rude. Mm. And I had to stand up on my stretcher and I had an argument with the doctor with blood all over me to wow. say, I want your name. Mm. And she came in, he was like, no, I don't care. All I just, I, I just want to know what happened. Just give me an answer. Just give me, an, I said, listen, before I give you an answer, whoever you are, you're going to give me your name and I want to call right now the MEC of health. Mm. And then the other nurses started coming in, the ones that were taking pictures of me. Wow. I think they were gossiping to, her, to, to him and the other doctor lady as well. Mm. They, they were not very friendly. I think maybe they told them who I am. Mm. You know what I mean? And then the next question was, then what are you doing here? Why don't you have a medical aid? Oh, wow. I'm like, listen, it's none of your business. I'm here. I pay my taxes. Uh, are mm. you guys going to help me? But before that, where is my daughter? Mm. You know what I mean? So, and then I stood myself up and then they said, um, the, I heard the other doctor said, no, we can't admit her. There's no enough beds. So now the doctors are arguing in front of me, the patient, about not having enough beds. Mm. You know what I mean? And then they asked me what they were, what I must, you know, what they must do to me. Mm. And then I just said, you know, I just clean me up and, you know, I just want to get out of here. Yeah. Because I could just feel that they were not very friendly. Their attitude was also not mm. very nice. And then they asked me if I could stand up and then I stood myself up and then I sat on one of the benches still bleeding until when I demanded to know the doctor's name mm. and to say they must call the MEC of health mm. and tell them that Balisa Uchuminyana is here. Mm. And then that's when they started taking me to, um, I think, to stitch me. Mm. And I think, I don't know how they do things, but even the way they were stitching my forehead, you know, fine... At that time, I think, you know, they gave me pain, whatever, injections and stuff like that. But um, I was still a bit dizzy at the time. Mm. And where was your daughter the whole time? I don't know where you she was. You still didn't know where I she still was? I didn't know. Nobody could give me answers. But then I assumed because they said they had a children's hospital, mm. I assumed that they took her then. Mm. Because at that time, that was when I saw my ex-husband coming in mm. and telling me that, okay, uh, my daughter is fine. They are treating her at the children's hospital mm. and all. And then also about the issue of admission and all. Mm. I'm the one actually that demanded that they must take me home because I could not... I think it was over three hours I was sitting on that bench mm. uh, with all the attitude and like I said, I understand they're running around the pressure that they're in or you know what I mean? And I'm sitting with people who are bleeding here, people who are short here, people who are like all sorts of, you can just imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 
I think at that time they just gave me painkillers mm. and then my ex-husband just drove me home. Um, I think that was the moment where I realized to say, you know, it's important to have medical aid, whether you're working or not. And the sad part was at that time, obviously, I'm an unemployed artist. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm a freelancer. And mm. um, I did not have medical aid. But then afterwards, then that's when I became home to say, you know what, I will heal at home or whatever. Mm. How, how bad were the injuries? What did the doctors say about the injuries, considering you know, all the not so great communication that was happening at the time? I don't think I received uh, like communication at the time mm. from my doctor, mm. from that doctor, the public uh, hospital doctor. After two days, that's when I went to a private hospital, mm. you know, putting monies together and you know what I mean? And um, the my family, the ones that, um, we're having a wedding, you know what I mean? They actually also took out money to say, mm. go to um, the private hospital. Mm. I went to private hospital and then I saw the doctor there and I also saw a plastic surgery. The funny thing, I don't even want to say funny, but the worst was when they examined me, mm. they found bottles still inside my forehead. Bro as so, in broken glass. Broken glasses wow. on windscreen. So... Firstly, they did not clean me up properly. Yes. Secondly, they stitched me, you know, with bottles, some of the bottles inside mm. of my forehead. You know what I mm. mean? So the doctor had to do everything from the start. Mm. Uh, admit me uh, and then performed. She, he said it's a, a plastic surgery. Mm. He's going to need to do that because... I told him that I'm also a public figure. And mm. when the doctor opened me up, you know, because I was still like awake at the time, she was like, wow. So I could see, you know, the doctor removing bottles or mm. windscreens, windows, windscreens, mm. yeah, pieces of bottles from my forehead, mm. <laughs> you know, putting them aside and, you know, just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So talk to me about what was, you know, so you were injured in your face, mm -hmm. around your forehead mm -hmm. and by your, your brows. Where else were you injured? Okay, it wasn't only in my forehead. Um, uh, my collarbone also mm. shifted. Mm -hmm. But I think the worst part of it is um, the after effects, mm. you know, that I'm suffering. It's an accident. Um, it's headaches, mainly now it's like... There's no week that goes by where without me taking painkillers or mm. headache tablets. Mm. So I'm always on headache tablets, firstly. And um, secondly, uh, like I have, I can say I have uh, like a short memory loss. Mm. You know, um, I remember I once got another job, you know, with some um, TV station as a news anchor in the morning. And I only lasted three months mm. on that job. A reason being, I would look at the auto cue, and then firstly, I would, you know, I would, it blurs like all my, the, uh, you know, remember I, I need to read like a 30 minutes bulletin. Yes. But around that 15 minutes, you know, I'm starting, I end up, you know, it goes blurry. Yes. And the other incident was when I was conducting an interview, mm. you know, with one of the top politicians, like, I, I lose consciousness still mm. in the middle of the interview. So mm. um, sometimes I wouldn't even know we're gonna, what is the next question or what he was yes. saying. So yes. I would have to cut my interview in the middle mm. you know, of an interview and that you know, uh, jeopardizes my work, obviously. Yes. And obviously, um, irritability. And when that starts to happen and I realize we're in the middle of the interview or you know, reading my auto cue, mm. I get very irritated because now I'm worried about my work. Yes. Now I'm worried about my directors, my bosses. Now every time we have to cut, we have to cut. You mm. know what I mean? Um, and then that's when the headaches also start coming mm. in. And then obviously at night, um, I think I also suffer a lot of nightmares, mm. which is what also my daughter goes through. Mm. You know, so mm. in the middle of the night, sometimes she would just scream and say, you know, the car, mommy, the car. Yes. I think that's what hurts me the most, more than anything. I feel that, you know what I mean, in everything, I think I'm a tough person, you know. Yes. I'm a tough woman, 
But when something starts affecting your children, mm. it, it becomes very painful. Mm. I'll make um, an example of what happened with my little girl at school. She went to school and, you know, the nine, ten-year-olds, for whatever reason, I think she suffered bullying mm. because of the accident. So it so happened that um, one of the kids' mothers, you mm. know, at school, showed my daughter a picture of her mother that was trending on social media on Facebook with all the stitches and all. Wow. See? And I think the little girl was saying to the other, hey, did you see Zoe's mom on Facebook? I'm like a nine-year-old on Facebook. My child is not even on Facebook. Yes. Now she's 13 years old, but she's not on Facebook. And then so Zoe knows the picture because I don't know how she also saw mm. the picture, maybe on Google or whatever, mm. but then the girl started arguing, mm. you know. So Zoe, my little girl, she felt that she had to also defend her mother, mm. you know what I mean? And it was a big fight at school. So when we were called in, Zoe started crying to say, Mommy, she made a fun of our trauma. Mm. She was showing everyone, you know what I mean, your mm. picture on a Facebook. Mm. And I don't even know how the school allowed that little girl to also have a phone. Yes, yes, <laughs> in school. yes. But I suppose, you know, yeah. Yes. So, and that, that's the sad part now when... I, as a mother, now have to come in and try and defend Zoe and, you know, my other kids and all. Yeah, it, 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 it's very painful. How um, did you, you deal with, because now you mentioned, of course, that um, you went to a public hospital, you ended up going to recovered home uh, after, and then at some point went to a private hospital. Was there ever a point where they wanted to check for damage to your brain and head injuries and things like that? You know, really, um, it's very tough in this industry, especially if you're a freelancer. Mm. So um, at that time, I still had to pay cash. Yes. So at that time, I still did not have medical aid, yes. number one. So everything, when you pay cash, your money runs out. Mm. So you can't even continue going to, you know, hospitals. All the appointments. For, for yes. All the appointments and all, you know what I mean? So that's why I'm saying it was for me now to start now looking for jobs, mm. you know, so that when I get other jobs as well, I can actually take that money again. It's either I go again for, you know, my continuous checkups. Mm. So that is what I'm dealing with right now. Mm. Um, so um, what people also don't know, I'm not only an actress, but I'm also a qualified commercial producer. Mm. So that's how I make my money there and there, mm. you know, at that time. So with the little money, as a freelance artist and a producer that you make, that is when you can be able now to say, okay, fine, let me look at the budget. Mm. I'm a single mother at the moment. I'm raising three kids. Yes. I've got, you know, bills to pay and mm. everything. So it's not easy in mm. this industry of ours. Mm. You know what I mean? Unless if you have a stable job or a bigger or long-term contract. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? But the worst is at the end of the day, you have to make things work, you have to make, you know, just yes, move on and yeah, yes. we freelance. But if I understand correctly, you did also get some assistance uh, along the way, not just from, you know, the people whose wedding you attended, from family as well. And, and they helped you through that financially, especially. Because I think people don't know the realities, like you say, of, of the work that we do. Mm -hmm. And it does become difficult um, not to say we are, or let me say, not to say that people in this industry are above public hospitals, but we understand what private uh, uh, medical care comes with, which is, is really, really a great privilege to have. Mm -hmm. So outside of all of those things that you've already explained, what are some uh, of the injuries that your daughter had? Okay, she also suffered a head injury. Yes. Yeah, so... Um she also had about five stitches, I think, on her forehead. Mm. But then now, um, the after effects of her accident are also headaches, insomnia. Mm. And the worst part is um, she's scared. Every time when I get on a steering wheel, she yes. asks a lot of questions, so she's nervous. Yes. She only gets comfortable when her dad is driving her yes. around. Yeah. Yes, yes. But any other car that she gets in, you can see that, you know what I mean, she, she gets scared. Mm. And I think it has also um, made her to be very, like she's an introvert now, you mm. know what I mean? She's not as bubbly as she used to be. Mm. 
And I remember even on that year, 2019, and last year, 2020, um, her marks dropped mm. at school. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. So I had to come in now and also assist, you know, with uh, speaking to the school about, you know, counselling mm. and um, just trying to, you know, boost the confidence again. Mm. But then, yeah, she is now very withdrawn. You you mentioned that when you were at, hos- at the hospital and you were quite upset with the attitude of the staff, um, did you end up getting assistance from the MEC with regards to your case? No, I think I just let it go to say, you know what, life goes on. Yes. In life, you just learn that, you know, you dust yourself, you fall. Yes. You rise, you dust yourself and you focus yes. on things that are better now, you know, mm. especially as a mother, you're for, you know, to build your life so that life can just carry on. Mm. That's mm. just, you know, all we do. But the one thing that hurt me the most was suffering tabloids. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? When... um. You, are, you end up being in the papers for something that you do not have control of. Yeah, yeah. And also um, false information, yeah. you know. And it happens that tabloid journalists, most of the time, they don't even have the respect for you as an artist yes. that's supposed to be celebrated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Tabloid journalists, I don't know, they can just take you there and there and strip you naked and just, mm. you know, pull you down but what hurts me the most is the way we are treated by mm. tabloids journalists. Mm. Mm. I think in South Africa, we are not celebrated as artists. Mm. Mm. Instead, tabloids journalists would want to look for one little thing. I mean, just look at that picture that was trending. I would never want to post. I only started posting after it was trending. I would mm. never want people or even my kids or my family to see me like that with blood all over with stitches and yet mm. I don't even know who took that picture that ended up being everywhere mm. on social media and stuff you know what I mean mm. and I was like they do not have respect for us as human beings mm. as artists that's mm. what I'm saying we're not, we not celebrated they're waiting for that opportunity that downfall mm. that little downfall so that they can just come and make a trend especially with Stories that are also not fully, yeah. you know, truthful. Yes, you know yes. what I mean? Most of it is to sell papers. Yes, yes. Most yes. of it is to whatever. I don't know how they get paid. Maybe they get paid two rents, a letter. It's yes. fine. You know what I mean? But then do it in a way where you are able to, you know, um, truthfully. Yeah. Don't just put false information about Alisa yeah. and so and yeah. so without even having all the facts. Yeah. And most of the time, we are not even called. But but also just, uh, I think, to add on to that is just the fact that the permission was not there, you know, to take the picture or to publish it. And um, like you said, you wouldn't necessarily want people to see you in that way, especially when you've got a child who now was getting bullied at school. So where are you today, um, physically, emotionally, where are you? Um, Emotionally, honestly speaking, I don't think um, I've healed that much because Mm. every time I talk about that incident, the accident, Mm. I get very emotional. You know, I I just end up crying. Mm. You know what I mean? Especially when incidents like this happen where my child Mm. gets bullied because of it, you know? So I think slowly but surely, um, trying just to move on, Mm. and just try to pick up the pieces and just focus mm. on, you know, okay, I've got kids to raise, I've got a life to live, mm. and um, that is just what I want to focus on mm. right now. Um, doing bids, jobs there and there. I remember there was another soapy again that called me last year to say, we want to bring your character. It was on, um, I think, Isibaya. Mm. I don't think I was completely healed at the time. When I went in there, they even cut my character short Mm. because I couldn't even, like the five pages that they gave me of that scene, Mm. by the time I got to the third page, I was forgetting my lines, Mm. you know? Mm. So that's the challenge that I get to say, Mm. that I always experience now to say, what is it, what's going to happen now? You Mm. know what I mean? If my career always gets jeopardized because now I'm a, besides being a public figure, I work with scripts. Yes. So if I go on set and then can't even just read a five page, you know, yes. yeah, yes, it's, yes. it's a bit of a challenge. And then um, 
Okay, thank God. Um, there's road accident fund as well yes. that I applied for. Yes. But then with road accident fund as well, the challenge is you wait for years. Yes. You know what I mean? You have to go to submit documents. They ask you to submit documents after documents. And mm. then at the, end, at the end of the day, you try to go after road accident fund to uh, lay that claim. You, it's like they're not even getting back to us. Mm. So now, uh, as a claimant, as a victim, you end up now going to lawyers. Because at mm. first I was claiming direct. And then now I'm getting lawyers. Lawyers take a certain percentage yes. chunk yes. of that. But even with lawyers as well, you still need to, you know, wait for them to, mm. you know, yeah. So it's a bit of a challenge to mm. say, yeah, that's why I understand why you have shows like, whoa, you know, I blew it because mm. in your once that money comes, and I show you haven't worked, you haven't worked for over five, six, ten years. It's been that day. long waiting. Ah, yeah, yeah. You're never, so, so, yeah. so now, <laughs> tell me about the driver mm. of the vehicle. Did you mm -hmm. ever find out exactly what happened and what was the situation with the driver of the vehicle? You know, sadly, so um, really, I uh, I tried to follow it up at first to find out who that driver was. And then the police said they cannot give me the information mm. of who the driver was. Mm. But then later on, I think insurance called me and then to say apparently they said the driver passed on a week after that accident. So I just decided, you know... I'm from not his even... injuries in the accident from or from... injuries. Wow. Yeah, because at that time after he bumped us, I think he was caught trying to run away. Yes. You know, and then... At that time, that was, uh, I think, a week or two afterwards when I received a call to say the driver passed away. I don't even know if it's the truth yeah. or they were trying to close the case. I just decided, you know what, life goes on. Yes. Let me move on and yes. just yeah, be the best so, mother that I can be. How did you guys find out that he was drunk? Um, I think the police at that time, they are the ones that told me because I think they took... Um, the breathalyzer. The, the breathalyzer. Yes. And when my ex-husband and my friends got to the scene, they said he was trying to run away, but he was uh, staggering on the yes. road. And then he was also smelling of um, alcohol. Alcohol. Mm. That's mm. how I found out. But about the driver and what happened to him afterwards, I decided personally to say, I don't even want to know him. Mm. I don't want to follow it up. Let mm. the law take its course. So if he has passed on and um, the case basically obviously can't be pursued... How do you feel about that? Right now, like I said, uh, I don't even want to feel anything. Mm. I'm not even going to say anything. All I can say is that, you know, speaking to people out there, you know, to say, uh, please don't drink and drive. You are putting innocent life at risk. Mm. You know what I mean? I could have lost my child. Mm. I could have lost my life. My children would have right now been living without a mother. You know what I mean? All because of a drunken driver. Somebody who became irresponsible, drank wherever he was and got onto the road. Mm. Because with other um, people also, you know, that are uh, witnesses, they are saying this driver, he was actually driving like that all the way from four ways mm. before he got up to where. So apparently there's also another car that he hit and then that car... Hit. I don't know, but then there's a whole lot of stories mm. to say that mm. car was driving in and out of the road mm. all the way from, you know, four-way side mm. until to, you know, around Vetkop and North Riding where I was. Mm. So mm. those were the statements of the, yeah. of the witnesses. Any final words? My final word is life is too short. Live your life happily, you know. Um, I'm just going to live my life peacefully, joyfully. You mm. know what I mean? Um, I'm enjoying being a mother right now. Mm. I'm enjoying, you know, living my life. I just mm. want to thank God for life. Yeah. And it's just my final word. I thank God for life. And I thank God that my kids have a mother. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's <laughs> a great note to end it on. Thank you so much for coming through to share the story and also just to be so open and honest in reliving those painful, traumatic moments. I wish you... So much healing. Thank you so much, Valessa. Hashtag unpacked with Relebuchile. The statistics are there, but some people have to live through it and others even die from it. Drunken drivers, 
we all know the saying, don't drink and drive. And I hope that you take that away from today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. I, I'm not like any other kids. I was feeling alone. I didn't even want to know the truth. Then I saw the name of my late mother mm. and they canceled it and then they put mine. Where was your father at the time? I feel that he rejected me from birth. It affected me so much. much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.